Yes, welcome back. It's still plus politics. We're still discussing security. And this time around, the issue of terrorism is still in the front burner. The chief of Hamista, Tuko Buratai, has stated that it may take the country another 20 years to end the menace of the terrorists, depending on the willingness level across parties. Buratai who noted that there is a misunderstanding of what terrorism and insurgency entail, said the response of both civil and military stakeholders will determine how fast Nigeria can win the war against the menace. He further, he further stated that only cooperation can help Nigerians stop the persistent insecurity in the country. Joining us to discuss this is the former assistant director of the DSS, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Good evening, Mr. Amakri. Good evening, how are you? And good to have you, I must say. Yes. Yeah, um, trust me, the statement comes quite scary. Even when we put it within context, when the chief of army staff says uh, willingness of all parties across levels, then we're looking at it. He explained further by saying this willingness refers to both civilians and, um, and uh, the, the, the military. But does that give us a sign of unwillingness? Does it give us a sign of resignation? that terrorism is here to stay with us? Well, um, terrorism is not something that uh, is supposed to stay with us. Uh, if it is supposed to stay with us forever, how did it come about the 20 years? Uh, you know, so terrorism can come, and of course it can be eliminated, depending on the political will of the leaders of that country. Hmm. You know, because we've had one uh, in so many countries. Uh, where it has persisted, just like in the United States, they still have since 9 11. You know, there are about 53 different terrorist attacks that have been, you know, uh, taken it. care of, which many people don't know. And then, of course, um, uh, there are some countries where it has totally been eliminated. You know, so we cannot uh, confuse those two things insurgency and uh, terrorism. Because what is happening here is that terrorism itself is the act, you know, is the method, strategy used by insurgents, you know, to scare people. And insurgency, of course, is a movement uh, that is going towards a political goal or an ideological goal. So these are the two, like the general said, uh, uh, many people don't understand what it is. But I think this is basically what it is. Interesting. And then, of course, he has to explain it in the context where you think it is going to be there for 20 years. Okay. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me change the statement now that um, uh, terrorism may be here longer if we don't exercise our political will. This is according to Dennis Hamakri, right? So yours is a bit of twist, and well, the, the, the the point of departure. Yeah, there's a little twist there. Yeah, so the point of departure there's between both twist. of you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so the point of departure between both of you is that you believe that it rests solely on the part of government. It believes that it rests both the 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 civil the civil uh, population and that of the government. So don't you also see the point he's making because. We've heard that they said the people are not cooperating, people are not giving them information. Yes. The thing is that uh, when you are fighting terrorism, terrorism can be fought to a standstill, but it cannot succeed only with military power. Especially if it is an ideological, an ideological insurgency. You know, it will not uh, be defeated only by military power. And then that's where I think the general is saying that there is need for people to be part of it. That means Nigerians generally have to come together and say, okay, we are against this. We are against terrorism and everybody is going to fight it together and then we can fight it off. Because you see, when 9-11 happened, 
in the United States. It actually brought the United States people together. The Americans came together. And then, of course, they were right behind their leaders to make sure that wherever this thing is happening, they are going to get them. And they did. Although they decimated it, but it still persists till today as I talk to you, but has been decimated to a level where it is not giving a big problem to the movement and then the livelihood of people. I seek more clarity on that because uh, my, my, my worry is uh, we are looking at a situation that has taken lives. We're looking at a situation that uh, a lot of people have come up with, or especially the government, coming up with, pardon my language, that's the way we call it, series of excuses. Oh, there is an international collaboration to make tourism faster on. Oh, the weapons are not being sold to us. And this time around, we heard that they've been decimated, they've been technically defeated. But is this an admittance now to say that we were deceiving you the other time? Uh, to be very, very honest with you, I don't expect that uh, particular statement from the, the chief of army staff because uh, he is the man uh, prosecuting the war right now. And if the commander of that war will come out to tell you that this thing is going to be with us for too long, then I don't think he's doing a very good job for the citizens of this country. Because I think the citizens, although they've not been actively participating in the war, you know, they are weary. People are weary. People are dying. You know, and uh, look at the, the death that we just witnessed just now. And then, of course, what I expected from the chief of army staff is some kind of uh, uh, encouraging, encouraging war, and of course words, and uh, uh, try to boost the morale of uh, people. Because uh, even the soldiers, with him saying that, they will feel that, oh, we are in for a long haul. So there is no hope. You know, and in 20 years time, how old will I be anyway? Uh, you know, some people will think that they, are, they will die before that time. So I don't think it's, it was a very good uh, publicity or public relations uh, yeah, okay. uh, statement to make to the nation at this time. Okay, let's even believe that it's being objective. Let's even believe without conceding that uh, it's giving us the realistic point of view. Now, if we start the countdown to 20 years from now, what's the guarantee that the 20 years will come and we say, oh, there was a time Nigeria was terrorized by some set of insurgents. Because as it is, it appears that the terrorists are growing more feathers, they are gaining more confidence, they are becoming more ruthless. We had close to 70 people being massacred for how many hours? And as we speak, there has not been reprisal attack from our government. Nobody has been fired. Nobody has been dealt with, and all we could do is to pass the blame game. Uh, uh, yes, you're very right. And uh, I think that this is something that we have to face right now. Because uh, I don't think right from when this insurgency started in the Northeast, we actually faced it. We didn't face it properly. And then to deal with it decisively, uh, we were playing politics with it because you remember very well, when this particular insurgency started, there were some people that were even saying that uh, they cannot ban Boko Haram. You know, go back to the archives, you will see. Where people were saying we cannot ban Boko Haram, you know, attacking Boko Haram is attacking a particular section of the country. And right now, we'll find out that this Frankenstein has grown to such an extent where, you know, it is becoming a problem for everybody right now. So I think there are many, many things we can do. The president himself is coming to talk to the uh, National Assembly. Um, a lot of restructuring will, might happen. We don't know. Because when you look at it, how do you conquer insurgency anyway? There are three basic ways to conquer insurgency. One is for the insurgents to surrender. You know, for them to surrender. Then number two is for... Uh, a, 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 an agreed settlement 
between the insurgents and the others. I'll give you an example like what we have in, in the militancy in Niger Delta. There was an agreement whereby it stopped. And then, of course, the other basic one is where you have to restructure your security forces. You restructure your security forces to make them more effective in dealing with that uh, particular problem. You know, so if they don't uh, surrender, and if you are not ready to uh, have a parley with them, then you better be ready to crush them. If you don't crush them and you are not doing any of these three things, then you will be looking forward to saying, okay, maybe in 20 or 30 or 40 years, hmm. uh, we are going to live with this uh, cancer. I, I, as a layman, I will continue to say that because I know these are high-profile suggestions that you are giving us. Some of us would also suggest that what about getting into the source of their funding? Is that what you meant by that will lead to them being surrendering their, 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 their whatever they have to surrender? Because we're looking at massive weapons being bandied around. These things are moving from country to country. We're talking about people keeping some set of people for years. That means there is yeah. some kind of funding. So what about doing that? Is intelligence too much to ask for? Let us uh, look back at history, because this is not a brand new thing that we are dealing with. You know, the Nigeria Biafra War, although it was a civil war, it was an insurgency. Okay? It was an insurgency. Many people don't look at it like that. It is an insurgency where a group of the section of the country is deciding to break away for political independence. That's an insurgency. And there are some that has happened. And if you look at how that war was prosecuted, it took us about three years. That's true. Okay? 1967 to 1970. Uh, uh, yeah. So you find out that um, uh, when they were prosecuting that war, a lot of things happened. Number one, they tried to stifle, stifle that section of the country so that you don't have food. People were actually starving. You, you, you don't have money. People were traded by butter because there was no money. And then, of course, they, they, they brought in mercenaries. You know, you know the Biafra war, there were some mercenaries that were working for the Biafra government at that time. You know, and these are all things that have happened that we can learn from. The, the, the suggestion has been made already that we should go and get uh, uh, mercenaries to do it. Um, the President Jonathan, when he was in office, used some. You know, executive outcomes from South Africa, even America used uh, uh, black water in Iraq and Afghanistan. So using them is okay, but you have to make it quietly. And it's like a secret contract that you write and then they come and prosecute their thing and go away because Geneva Convention will never recognize people like this. They are soldiers of fortune and they don't believe in human rights. Okay? Uh -huh. So, these are all things that could be done. And if we want to get rid of this, we can. You know, the, the Turkish government in 1994, they went in there, when the PKK, the Kurdish Turks, were rebelling against the government and there was a serious insurgency, they were there. And then the, the government actually allowed them uh, to... Uh, do whatever they are doing, and then reorganize their military forces and crush that insurgency. That's true. So these are things that can be done. We cannot give up at this moment because we'll spend too much money, many lives have gone away, and then, of course, um, we've, uh, we've, we've suffered from it too much okay. to allow it to continue. I, I like bringing all my questions from the street. I like bringing my questions from the vendor stand because uh, there are conversations every now and then about how we feel about this issue. Now, if you give us a background of 
how insurrection or insurgency it was during the Biafra War. And we saw the will of the state to stifle that particular set of people. And the war was ended after 30 months. Now, we still have some of these men in government. We still have some of these people. What stops them from using maybe a contemporary style to stop them? And the people on the street will also remind us there was a time insurgency was also very, very prominent in Abuja. But as we speak, it hasn't been happening. Necessary steps have been taken. Is it about prioritizing the rich and neglecting the poor? Well, I don't know whether you want to call it uh, a, a war or a war of classes, you know, a class war, uh, the rich and the poor. Because Nigeria at this particular moment is facing a lot a lot of problems, a lot of security problems. It is not just the insurgency in the Northeast, okay? Um, you have banditry, you have kidnapping. And when you, when you study kidnapping, you will find out that the root causes of all this kidnapping, banditry, is poverty, you know, unemployment. And of course, we just got the n size protests in Lagos and all over the country. You know, and I, I hope that our leaders are not just going to brush it aside and say, oh, forget these boys, you know. The point is that it is an indication of the health of the country. Hmm. All these things are indications of the health of the country. And when you look at it, leaders who have the political will have to solve it. Because you can see what was happening in the National Assembly the other day. People are worried now because it is going down and touching each other. And a lot of them will want to come back, uh, you know, uh, in 2023 to run again. So you have your constituency to, to answer to. Hmm. You have to do something so that all these lives that are going, food security is going to be a problem already. In fact, okay. this Christmas, you will see how food security and the high cost of food is going to, because of all this. So all these little, little problems that we have all over the country, you know, has to be solved. And the only way to solve it is to go back to the table, review all your processes, and then see what you can do. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Dennis Amakri, uh, former assistant director of the uh, DSS for your insight and trust me I want to encourage you not to give up keep advising keep talking somewhere somehow we will find our redemption once again thank you for your time and uh, to our viewers thank you for staying with us we'll take a short breather and when we return I'll be giving you my take especially on the police move to stop the answers panel Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. Do we need to ask if the police is an agency of the government? Is it safe to conclude that government is no longer willing to continue the probe it started off? Or did I hear the state government may be running at cross purpose with federal government? Or is this a case of well-orchestrated script from the beginning? These and more are the conjectures out there on the genuineness of the government, both at the state and federal levels. As police embark on this legal move, many critical minds are on the loop to be proven wrong that government was never sincere in the first place. For me... I choose to watch the outcome of these episodes before I register my well-considered opinion. This is where we drop the coaching on Plus Politics today. The program returns same time tomorrow. Until then, I am Coyote Ladeinde saying bye for now. <laughs>